So DreamWorks dropped this trailer the other day for a little movie called The Bad Guys. As for the reception the trailer got, this guy is everywhere. So Persona 5, but with furries. Starring Mr. Twitter Famous. Oh my god, you guys need to chill. <laughs> Not gonna talk about that stuff. I don't want this video to get demonetized. Got a fun Shy Reaper. But yes, Mr. Wolf, who is literally if the This Is Fine comic was a person. Mr. Wolf is the head of the Do Good Gang, featuring Mr. Stank, Mr. Solid Snake, a Bolivian mobster, uh, like, like actually. And uh, I don't know who you are, you haven't shown up in the part of the story I'm on yet. Basically, since these guys are carnivorous animals, society has always been terrified of them. This story is obviously very fictional, because in real life, no one's scared of him. It's, uh, quite the opposite. But Mr. Wolf here is sick of playing into stereotypes and wants the world to see that he's a good person despite his frightening appearance. Uh, too bad no one else cares. So he's gotta inspire them with good guy hats and the good guy mobile. <laughs> what? High Standard Jailbreak Media is still hype to me for some reason I just can't put a finger on. And that's why I like Cruella. God, I'm two for two for liking cheesy movies that are quite bad just because they cover some story trope I like. But this movie seems like it will fulfill that niche for me too. Uh, no, no, not that niche. What I'm talking about is my favorite story type of a character trying to live their normal life in a city, but is also tasked with having another identity that they have to either save the day or achieve their goals with, but have to keep a secret. And by that, I mean Tokyo Mirage Sessions. <laughs> TMS has my favorite story type and has great ideas! Too bad the characters are extremely bland and so the drama and their normal and secret lives are boring. But if the story had interesting non-stock characters, you could make it work really well! God, I hate that the other day I actually said the sentence to my friend. I like Spider-Man because it's Tokyo Mirage Sessions, but good. <laughs> the bad guys doesn't quite fit that mold because, you know, how are these goddamn furries gonna hide their identity in a world of humans? But at the same time, they, uh, somehow still do it? This movie looks like it's going to be fun, because we'll be invested in both the conflict of the crimes and the conflict of the main characters trying to change their act, and society not accepting them for the people they are because of how they classify different species into stereotypes. If they don't fit that mold, that makes them outcasts, and their mental health crumbles at the realization that they'll never get to be just themselves because the world does not think that they're good enough. Wow, this really is Beastars. <laughs> Let's hope Mr. Wolf will be able to break out of the chains of being seen as scary just like Lugosi was able to. So from all of this interesting setup that we got here from this movie and its main characters, what did we learn today? That's right! Mr. Wolf is miles more interesting than Itsuki Aoi. So this movie was based off a children's book series of the same name, written by a guy named Aaron Blobby. And you know what? This series is pretty wholesome and actually really funny. It's not really a novel, but more like a Sunday comic strip or a Twitter or Instagram comic series. I was curious about checking it out because it was 5am and I showed up to my final exam three hours early and was locked out of most of the buildings on campus because it was so early. I had nothing better to do because I didn't have my switch to grind in Shin Megami Tensei 5, so I just sat down on a bench and read the series to pass the time. Going into it, I thought I was literally just going to be reading a child-level book with pandering humor, but I actually was really surprised because I unironically really enjoyed it. I soon came to realize that its kid-friendliness is in the same vein as something like Pokemon BDSP, where yeah, it's appropriate for kids, but isn't exactly pandering and could be enjoyed by anyone. So, what exactly are the books about? It's really simple. This guy named Mr. Wolf wants to be good, and so he tries to do good deeds along with his buddies. Where the humor in the story comes from is basically what makes Kill a Kill funny, but reversed. Out of all the examples I could have used for this comic series, I used Kill a Kill? <laughs> Here's what I mean. Kill a Kill is funny because it's about a normal, grounded person interacting with an absolutely crazy and ridiculous world. The humor comes from Ryuko Matoi, aka the straight man's reaction to all of this insanity and the ludicrous way that the world responds back to her. Now take that, but flip it. What if the world was the grounding force, while the main characters are completely insane and lack complete self-awareness and give even crazier responses back to the world? That would be the bad guys. Mr. Wolf is just overly enthusiastic with a slight touch of passive aggressivism, and it makes whatever situation he throws the gang into funny because of how warped his point of view is. You see, what exactly defines something as good? Sure, there are many universal generalities, but depending on point of view, 
there are even more deeds that are only considered good via subjectivity. So that's why, as one of the good guy gang's first acts of good deedery, they decide to break 200 dogs out of prison. Mr. Wolf sees it as, people are sad when they're locked up and have their freedom taken away. So if we give them their freedom back, they won't be so bummed out anymore. Therefore, we are doing good. <laughs> this guy's mental gymnastics are what makes him so funny. Stuff like this is what you'll expect to see from the different chapters. I feel like the climax of this little jailbreak arc perfectly encapsulates what the comedy in this series will be like. This is your lucky day, hermanos. We're getting you out of here. Everyone follow us. Is that what I think it is? That's a snake, dude. But what's that other thing? I think it's a sardine. Maybe. Oh, oh this is a snake. snake. You're running the wrong way. It worked. Okay, Mr. Rolf, hit it. <laughs> I hear you, little buddy. Let's give those puppies their freedom. Look at them, guys. We've changed their lives, and they'll love us forever. Help, a wolf. And a shark. And a snake. And possibly some kind of vampire's ID. Well, they certainly didn't seem very grateful, did they? They called me a sardine. I thought you were a sardine. You're missing the point, guys. We did it. We gave 200 dogs a whole new life. Doesn't that make you feel awesome? You really do hug way more than I'm comfortable with, man. Oh, come on. You loved it. I know you did. Tell me the truth. Didn't it feel great to be the good guy for once? Tell me how it felt, fellas. As I said, crazy, unaware characters in a grounded world. Mr. Wolf's character is what drives this whole thing. And while they're making him a lot more different in the movie, I believe that could still work too if done right. I can understand why the movie is going for a more streamlined plot with grounded characters though. The books are supposed to be like fun little one-shot webcomics where there isn't a lot of time to go into the inner details of each of the characters. They have their base set of traits and those traits bounce off and interact with the world around them to create funny character-based scenarios. With a longer format for the story, like a film, the writers are tasked with making a story that could work in an extended, but still natural format. Sure, Mr. Wolf is now very self-aware and has more personality traits than just a uh, used car salesman, but for a movie that's trying to tackle the subject of the negative impact of stereotypes in a more direct way, I feel like this will work really well. I have faith that DreamWorks can make this a great and emotionally charged movie, just like how they did with something like Megamind. I love stories about flawed individuals who also happen to do heists, reflecting on their past actions, coming to terms with them, and growing from them to right their wrongs. A couple years ago, I started writing a story about this son of a rich corporation owner who would commit awful acts of domestic terrorism in the shadows to get people to rely on his father's company. He would finally succeed in stealing what his dad wanted the most, but by doing so, he also sees the negative effects that it has on the people around him. That spurs him on to make a change and right the wrongs he's done in the past by going against his father and protecting the people of the city instead of forcing them to submit to fear. It's a story idea that I had and kind of never went anywhere with and most likely never will. But I feel like one of the biggest reasons why I'm excited for the bad guys is because it's going to be a story like that. I love redemption arcs and I cannot wait to see how Mr. Wolf's arc will be handled. There's a lot of potential with this movie and even though it's straying from his already established character in the books, I feel like what we have here is equally just as, or even more interesting, honestly. I think that the comedy from this movie is going to come in a similar, but still different way from the books. What we're losing in lack of self-awareness, we're gaining in a self-inflicted sly personality. Self-inflicted? What? Well, how I feel this movie is going to adapt Mr. Wolf's lack of self-awareness is to make it so that this new sly personality they gave him is actually just a front that he's been playing up for so long that he forgot even was a front in the first place. When he does acts of good, or uh, extremely morally subjective good, <laughs> He begins to question the weird rush he gets from doing good, and the way that his sly persona that he puts on's clash will be, if done right, both where the comedy and the intriguing character growth will come from. We'll just have to see. So, congrats, DreamWorks. You made me excited for your new movie. Persona 5, but Joker is based. <laughs>
You know, the reason for all the Persona 5 comparisons is not only because they are thieves, but because this movie is staying true to its comic book roots and really giving it a flashy comic stylized look. I'm currently going through a huge Spider-Man phase, and after re-watching Spider-Verse and then seeing this trailer dropped, yeah, I'm excited. So to close everything off, this movie actually looks really promising, and I literally have not seen a new DreamWorks film in like, I think just about like a decade or something, so yeah. I honestly recommend checking out the comics if you want to read something wholesome and short that will give you a small laugh on your train ride or bus ride to class or work. That's what I've been doing with it. Each book is only like four bucks on the iTunes store, so yeah. I'm excited for this movie, and I know that so many other people are too, because, uh, yeah, furious. I mean, yeah, I will admit, that's why I was compelled to make a video on this little series. I often get asked the question, like, a lot, am I a furry? G good question. Anyway, you guys want to see another one of my favorite scenes from the comic? Alright. Just about to hack into the mainframe. <laughs> hey, Mr. Snake. I just had a great idea on how to do more good. Ugh, I'm sick of that. Let me get back to my hacking. Oh, <laughs> that's a great idea, Mr. Snake. You're hacking people to incentivize them to download Surfshark VPN. What? Oh, we'll do so much good by having people get Surfshark VPN. With it, people can change their internet region to anywhere in the world and see what streaming services in other countries have. This is not what- Oh! Oh! And when you tell them to get Surfshark, you can also let them know that if they click the link in the description and use the code KAMUI, they'll get 83% off, three extra free months, and if you don't like it, it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee! Uh, I'm still gonna hack them even if they have Surf and whatever it's, whatever it's called. No, you're not, because Surfshark has clean web. It blocks malicious ads, malware, and also trackers. So remember, click the link in the description and use code KAMUI to get the previously mentioned services. Why are you like this? Oh, Mr. Snake, with this, we'll definitely be the good guys. I just wanted to say thank you to Reese and Draylon for voicing in this video. The voiceover in this was actually a collaboration of the Mission Reese Beastars dub, and Reese and Draylon are two of the heads. You should check them out. They will be posting their first episode soon. I voiced Louie in that project, so if you want to hear that, that's just another reason you should go check it out. Also, special thanks to Undead Kasmic for drawing the character stills I used in this video. There's something new I'm trying out, and I want to know your guys' opinion on them. Special thanks to my patrons. Sorry I disappeared for so long. School absolutely murdered me, but I'm back now to making content again, and you guys will start getting more again. So, as for what's next? Well, I got a pretty big Beastars video that I want to make, and it's about the final season. You'll see. Also, sometime down the line, I really want to make a video on why, for some weird reason, I actually love Amazing Spider-Man 2. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon for the Beastars final season video.